Around the world today, we see many problems. Our seemingly superior modern society has social problems plaguing it all throughout. Some do not have enough food to eat or water to drink. Some live lives devastated by the effects of widespread illness. Some will spend their lives surrounded by war-torn areas and others simply immense poverty. There is hope though. A common idea is being used all over the world to address these problems. The World Game. Different organisations in different locations and circumstances are using the power of soccer to address the large-scale problems and to implement change. On this program, we will look in depth at a few particular programs that are using this idea, which will allow us to gain a complete understanding of how this idea is being put into practice and making change. I'm a professional footballer and Australian Socceroo. I know all too well the power of football to change lives. Football is the biggest sport in the world and the common language of the planet. The one and only game that can unite every nation and bring humanity together. It teaches us important lessons, allows us to make great friends, and leaves us with incredible me memories. Me Powerful words there from Craig Foster, and we should definitely keep those in mind as we travel to the south of Africa, in particular Zimbabwe, to view our first program in focus, Grassroots Soccer. Grassroots Soccer is a very special organisation trying to achieve their mission of using the power of soccer to educate, inspire and mobilise communities to stop the spread of HIV. Their vision is a world mobilised through soccer to create an AIDS-free generation and their strategy is to achieve by constantly improving HIV prevention techniques and their life skills curriculum which aims to share the program and concept around the world and to all of the kids who they work with. Here are some words from one of the committed coaches in the grassroots soccer team. Teaching the youth about HIV and AIDS so that they take care of themselves, they know about HIV and AIDS, and so that they can also spread the word and not fall into the same trap I fell into. As you may have noticed, grassroots soccer focuses on the prevention of AIDS. And there is definitely a reason for concern regarding this issue, as alarming effects are already taking place from this contagious and sickening disease. Over 23 million people in Africa are currently affected by AIDS, and more than 1 million will die each year as a result. Since 2002, the team at Grassroots Soccer has worked very hard to raise awareness about these issues and problems. Their hard work has paid off, with their soccer-themed programs having positive effects in the community, with over 300,000 young people graduating from their programs. This organisation is definitely leading the charge and I hope that in the future the good work continues and that more young people can continue to benefit from this great program. Now, for our second program in focus, we travel to the West Bank, in Israel, where soccer is being used as the solution for a very different problem. Soccer for Peace was founded in 2005 and is a non-for-profit organisation based in Israel which aims to unite Jewish and Palestinian children through the common language of soccer. 
They do this through intense training programs, after school activities, and multiple day camps. You have a game, people come together. The way it's honor for peace works is that children meet at summer camp. They generally arrive when they're 10 or 11 years old. They train together, board together, eat together, play together for the five days of camp. And then once the school year starts anew, that same group of kids is enrolled in our year long program. Soccer for Peace deals with ethnic conflict. Much like grassroots soccer, it uses soccer as the draw card and a common ground from which it branches out to other programs, which in this case is learning about other religions and to value everyone in the same regard, no matter which religion they follow. To conclude, Soccer for Peace is a small but powerful program dedicated to bridging the gap between Arab and Jewish youth, and while the work is not going to stop the large-scale issues, it is certainly helping these people to have a better future. And now, we travel to Karachi, Pakistan to view our final case study in the Karachi United Football Foundation. My name is Sufiya and I play in Karachi United. I go to school and then I go to school and go to school and go to Karachi United. We go to school and we give our coach and we give our coach. We go to school and go to school and we go to school and we go to school. I want to be a very good player for Pakistan. The Karachi United Football Foundation was founded in 2010 and has established, established itself as a committed organisation to improving the lives of youth in Pakistan. Using a more elitist football approach, the foundation sets out to achieve its FEVH model, which is 1. Football development, providing football training in a safe environment to inner city youth. Education. Supporting players and families by providing education support. Vocational training. Providing opportunities for vocational training. And health awareness. Engaging and developing communities through health awareness programs. Today we have about 150 kids, but I want to see us catering to 6,000 kids and 10,000 kids from there on. And that's when we really get into the inner cities. While a very strong football program is offered, it is important that we understand how unique and special this program is. Almost all of these boys you have seen live unsafe lives with many dangerous people living amongst them and violent gangs affiliated to political parties also present. At times the kids don't want to go to training as they are scared to go out of the house because there are bombings going on outside. But the coaches are dedicated to providing a safe environment to train and spend time and effort making sure this is the case. Medical attention is also given, which is quite uncommon for young boys in Pakistan. Attend the clinics because um, there's someone to listen to their problems, their health problems. Especially. Once they understand various health problems and how to deal with them, then they are the ones who can make a change in society. I think the case study of the Karachi United Football Foundation is a great one to finish off with because it makes us take for granted what we have in our life and we see that something such as playing soccer for a club or a team can be such a unique opportunity and such a special experience for these people because of the unfortunate state that their society is in. nations came together with a shared purpose, football, and one common goal to improve their lives. Now we come to the end of the program and it's time to tie it all up. As great as the solution of soccer has been in the regard that it has had largely positive effects, we must also look at the key issues that are wrong with our world today, as these are the things that are causing the need for the solution. 
The destructive illness of HIV means that millions of people in Africa live shortened lives while others in the world are oblivious to their struggles. Ethnic tension in Israel and its surrounding countries mean that young kids will live without any contact with members of other religions and thus gain misconceptions. And underground movements, bombings and violent acts see young boys and girls in Pakistan terrified to leave their homes and enter the street. The soccer approach is effective and a great way to start, but it is not the only way, it is not the only solution. To raise awareness and to solve these large-scale issues would be an act of social sustainability. It will allow more people to enjoy rights, freedom and safety which they do not currently have and they need it because it is beneficial for the world going into the future. Well, thank you very much for watching this program. I hope you've been un able to understand the power that the game of soccer has been able to have all over the world. It is not necessarily solving the problems, but it is addressing it. And if we address many different problems, positive results are sure to come, and they already have been coming. This is an issue that I am very passionate about, and I am very glad to see that progress is being made in all parts of the world. Once again, thank you very much. Goodbye.